Hey guys, welcome back to our repair guys. In today's video guys, we're going to be fixing a famous oil leak on the Dodge Journey guys. That's what we have here, Dodge Journey. Uh, Grand Caravan, okay, will be the same way if you have the 3.6 engine. Uh, we'll have guys more than 200 videos on this car and every Dodge Jeep Chrysler that we get at the shop. So please guys subscribe to the channel. Our mission in the shop is to save as much money as we can by teaching you how to fix your car for free. All we need in return, subscribe and a like. So, all the parts and tools that we use, they will be listed in the description of the video below. Stay with us, I'm going to show you where the oil is coming from, how to get to it and how to fix that leak. In most cases you can fix it super super cheap, but the dealers, I heard somewhere that they want from seven to thousand dollars for that fix, so uh, you can do that for way 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 cheaper. So let's go ahead and start on it now. Okay, so you can see that's where the oil leak is. Uh, check out the oil. Okay, trying to get a little bit of light. Okay, that oil there. Okay, you can see that oil is, is uh, boiling there. Okay, it looks like it's on this side. Uh, also, if you come on this side, you'll notice more oil coming out. Okay, the transmission housing. And the oil will start leaking out and it will come to uh, right there. So under the transmission side will have the oil leak on that dot journey. So in order to drain the coolant uh, you might need to jack the car up a little bit on both sides. Always use jack stands. Okay, not just the jack itself. Jack stands on both sides. You need to go on the front and here and uh, then we'll need to remove that cover. Okay, that cover so we can access the drain port for the uh, radiator as well with a plastic uh, with actually with a, with a panel removal too with a clip removal too. We're going to pop those clips open now. Okay, this is uh, this is a really, really good spray. And this spray, guys, if you spray the clip just a little bit, okay, just a little bit inside, uh, and let them sit for a little bit, you're not going to break them and they'll come off, okay, really easy after that. So you can see one of them came out, you pull the middle piece out and the rest of it. Uh, they will have so much mud and dust stuck in them that you will have to soak them a little bit. Otherwise you have to get new clips. We're going to show you okay, where to get new clips from if you need to. Okay, you can see oh, this one came out as well. Perfect, just like that. And we'll continue doing that now to the rest of them. Okay, we have one right here in the corner. So this one I can just spray through here a little bit. Okay, check out all the dust and the rest coming out of them. That's just unbelievable. So we'll keep doing that guys and uh, the next scene we're going to show you where all the clips are so we don't waste your time just watching how we pull them. Uh, the procedure is not too complicated but just takes a little bit of time and uh, once we remove that uh, trim we will show you where they are. Also we will have some on the inside there and uh, again to clarify that's the piece that we'll be removing now. So here right in front of the tire, okay we have one more clip that we need to remove. Sometimes when you open them, if you grab them with the pliers, it works a little bit better. We have one on the inner side there of the fender liner. We need to remove this one as well. And uh, the one in the wheel well, usually, will be stuck really, really bad. This is because you have more mud and dust there. So we'll be using the pliers on this one. Okay, came out. You can see those by the wheels guys are incredibly bad. Uh, stay with us towards the end. I'm going to show you where we get ours from and you can check out uh, in the description of the video below. They have an amazing deal on uh, replacement clips because I guarantee you're going to break some of those no matter how much you try. So check out these are all the clips. How many clips we got now. 
once we remove the piece I'm going to show you exactly how many there are. Let's come now on this side. Okay, just grab that piece and pull it straight down. Okay, it's coming out. And now we can show you a little bit better what we're talking about. So everywhere you see a hole guys, there is a clip. Check it out now on the bottom. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here, then we go seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven there, twelve. Okay, thirteen. Thirteen clips. Then we have one, two, three, four. Four clips there. And uh, do not forget the side ones that attach to the fender liners. Okay, one here and one on the other side. So now we are ready to go under the car now. Okay, this is uh, where your radiator is located. Okay, all the radiators actually. And uh, right here. Okay. I'm trying to focus here. You can see this is guys your drain plug with a Phillips screwdriver. So we'll need to get that one loose now. Make sure that your car okay is not uh, is not hot because if it's hot that thing can spray and burn you really bad. Use eye protection as well. Uh, make sure the coolant is cold and we'll show you what we need to do next. Okay, we got the Phillips screwdriver now. We have a container to collect everything and finally, finally guys we are ready to start draining the coolant out of that thing. Okay, you can see it just start leaking like that now. So what we'll do next? We'll go ahead and open the coolant reservoir because it will be creating some back pressure. Okay, and I'm still working. It it got air. Okay, but the port came all the way out now. And check it out how fast it's coming out. So we will let it drain like that. Until all of it comes out, you'll never be able to get all the coolant out of the vehicle. Especially if you have the uh, heater for the federal seat and all that stuff. So uh, we'll see how much we're going to get now. We let the jack down. That way we'll get a little bit more coolant out of it because everything will be level. And uh, the coolant will come more to the front. Alright guys, this is the drain plug, that's what it looks like now. Uh, and uh, you can check out, it has a rubber seal as well, that's a plastic uh, drain plug, so be careful how you get that thing tight, not to over tighten it. Now, uh, the replacement clips that I told you, that we'll be using because we broke some of ours. Okay, check it out, we'll include that in the description of the video below. It comes with all the tools that you need to remove the, the clips also. Those are the replacement clips. All that. It's cheaper than just buying a few clips at a parts store. And you can see how many clips you have. Uh, I believe those will be like the one that we need. You have different sizes so you can see exactly which one fits your vehicle. Okay, so we're ready to uh, install the drain plug now. We drain uh, all of it, nothing comes out now. You can see barely drips, one drop per every five seconds. So uh, you'll never be able to get as much out as uh, as you think you will, but it's a pretty big system and we probably got about six to seven quarts of coolant out of there. So just get this one tight. And uh, so next uh, we just need to get a flathead screwdriver, get that clamp loose now. Okay, let's see if we can get that boot out. Yep, perfect. And then uh, there is one more clamp right there. Okay, we're getting this one out now. So now we just grab it and we gently need to pull that thing out. Careful not to break any vacuum hoses in the way or anything like that. Okay, you can see, it came like that. 
so now we have one rubber guide a glide right here uh, this one in our case looks like it's broken you have two more on the back side okay they're like you'll feel them one right here one over there and what you need to do okay you need to pull straight up to come out of the rubber bushings and after that okay this sensor here for the temperature uh, intake temperature sensor pull that one out and when it's out of the other two sensors okay all we have to do now, just start pulling it out. Okay, and now we just need to mess with it, okay, until we get it out. I think it will come out only one way, because there is one, uh, one thing holding on the bottom. So let me figure out, okay, which way this thing will come out. Show me what is the easiest way to remove it. So what we'll do, uh, we'll actually remove that little hose, it's in the way. Okay, so let me get this one out of here now. Uh, <coughs> if the engine is hot, never do that because it's part of the cooling system. Okay, you don't want to burn yourself. Because it could be under enormous amount of pressure. So. Okay, it got loose now. You might be able to do it without removing the holes. Okay, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now, right here there is one clamp on the back side, one plastic retainer that we need to uh, pop up. That way the holes will go down. Okay, like that, and now I think, let's see if we'll be able to pull that guy out of here. Oh, maybe it still will not work, guys. Okay, this thing is ridiculous, I'm telling you. So, I don't know if it will come out without removing the intake manifold, the upper intake. Because there is two guys holding on the back. So if you push towards the back, okay, come out like that. I think we almost got it out. Okay, like that. Those are the two. Oh, yeah, there was a little bit of water. Uh, there are two bushings on the back that we need to release in order to pull that thing out. Let me show you where they are on the engine quick. Okay, if you look towards the back side, this is one of them, this is the other one, right there. So with 8mm socket now, okay, there are four bolts that we need to, four screws that we need to remove. Here we will have to do it by hand, we will not be able to do the impact because it's a little bit of limited room. So one more. So two left. Okay, this, and now we have one more on top holding, but let's remove this one. Perfect, now <coughs> we need to disconnect the wires here. Okay, this, you kind of slide it out. Now, uh, this wire right here, you can see that's a safety pin. You need to pull that thing okay, out. Okay, like that. Press down now. Okay, that's perfect. And pull it out. And we got the throttle body out of the way now. 
So now we need to get 8 mm socket and we will need to start removing uh, a few a few screws now for the upper intake. It's very important not to over tight on those later. It's at 7 to 9 newton meters. So we keep doing that now. We'll be fixing a common oil leak on that engine as well. We have so many videos, so many videos guys. If you have any specific problem, drop a comment below. We'll get the idea about fixing things and uh, also we'll try to make a video for your specific problem. Okay, those are loose now. With 10 millimeter, we have to remove two nuts holding the intake right here. That's the upper intake. Okay, perfect. This one's been loose for like two seconds and we're still spinning it. Great. Okay, don't drop things like we do. Now we need to start uh, disconnecting a few hoses. We need to also disconnect, okay, here the, uh, this will be the mass, a uh, MAP sensor, in a little bit. Okay, that MAP sensor right here. Okay, we need to pull that red thing to the back. Now press down on it and pull. <coughs> pull the wire out, but ours is stuck a little bit. Okay, perfect. Okay, with the clip removal too, we need to remove that holder there. Again, all the tools and parts guys that we use will be listed in the description of the video below all the videos, so please check it out for your convenience. This thing is almost done, we just want to make sure we don't break them, because if we do we have to replace all that stuff later. Okay, perfect, like that. Now we have one vacuum hose right here that we'll need to pull out. <laughs> this one, we might even do it in a little bit. When I get to it. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, we'll remove that hose there. Okay, this one, I got it loose, but it's moving now. Okay, it's coming out. Perfect. Just careful not to break your intake. Now, we can go ahead, remove that bracket here, that clamp, and uh, we need to pull that hose out now. This one will be stuck, most likely. Okay, like that. Here, we have one more nut holding. Two nuts. Okay, one on this side, one on the other side, with a 10 millimeter socket. So now it's still holding guys, uh, this bracket right here, <coughs> we need to uh, go ahead and remove those brackets so we can get it out, uh, quite a bit of disassembly here, so now we'll be removing that cable here, okay on, over the ball there is one plastic holder for the wires here so we need to pull that one out and this one usually you want to get it a little bit on each side, okay, and then it will come out. If you just try to go on one side, okay, it's not going to come out. 
Okay, and you can see this one came out. Now we can uh, we can use, let's see, a wrench. I think that will actually let us take that bolt off. So we're on the left side of the engine now where we remove the two nuts. So what we'll be doing now, we'll try to remove that, uh, that uh, nut and bolt and get that bracket out. And if that bracket comes out now, we won't have to mess with the ones on the front. So we want to see which one is easier guys. So you don't have to do the same amount of work that we do. Probably save you a little bit of headache. Okay, this nut is almost out. Perfect. So what we did right here now, okay, we pull that bracket of the of the bolt here. Okay, you can see I pulled it out, and then I pulled it up like that. And now we're going to use a 13 millimeter deep socket to remove that bolt, and this bracket should come out hopefully. Okay, so we have extension with the deep socket 13. And we're trying to remove that bolt now. Whoever thought of that design, guys, I think they wanted you to go to the dealership. Because that's, uh, that's quite a bit of work. Okay, we need to just without in a little bit perfect it's right there now we'll just grab it pull the bolt out okay this is what it looks like let me let me show you a little bit more okay it goes this way on the bracket, now we will need to pull that bracket out, like that. Okay, and we can just leave it there now. We have one more bolt right here, uh, with the 8 millimeter that we need to remove. That's uh, one that we didn't see at first. So, we'll go ahead, remove that one now, and uh, then we'll be ready to continue with the next step. Okay, let's see now if we can lift up on this side a little bit and get it out of here. Perfect. So you can see that that saved us quite a bit of headache, guys. Now one of the gaskets, okay, is stuck here. The other ones are over there. You can see that's how they need to be, right here. So we're going to cover the intake now. Make sure that you cover your hole so you don't drop anything. Even I would recommend to put a bigger towel or something. Because if you drop something in the valves and you don't notice it, your engine will be done. Okay, now we can pull that piece, it's extremely dirty and dusty usually, so pull that thing out and we can proceed with the next step. So next we're going to vacuum here, you can see how much stuff we have, uh, we don't want that thing to go uh, in the intake, so uh, that's what we'll be doing, we'll get the vacuum and just vacuum a little bit to make sure that we clean everything. So now we need to disconnect the fuel line guys, you have to be extremely careful, this thing is under pressure, you have a fire extinguisher on the side, also you use eye protection because it can spray in your eyes and hurt you really bad. Gloves, don't ask me why I don't use gloves, we'll put a towel here now, 
Okay, there is a way to actually minimize the fuel pressure and drain it, but uh, we don't have the tool, so we do it this way. So what we do, push it all the way in now. Okay, check it out, all the way in. Push on the two teeth, in, and then start pulling out. Now, I'll go slowly because there might be fuel pressure and I don't want that to spray, so I'll just hold my hand to prevent it to go in, in my eyes. Okay, and it came out like that. You can see just some fuel, but not too, too bad. Next, we need to disconnect, okay, those wires there in order to remove the lower intake with the fuel rail. We had a video guys, we made a video how to replace fuel injectors if you want to see that. It's on the channel and we have one more on the bottom here. Okay, this one, it's coming out but we'll need to help it with the pliers a little bit because it's too long. Okay, perfect, just like that came out. Now after you vacuum here, make sure everything's good so you don't get anything in the engine. We have, uh, I believe, four, six bolts, eight bolts. Maybe eight bolts that we need to remove. It's very important how you get those things tied later because if you over tighten them, you can, you can damage things. So you can see three bolts so far on this side. This one will be the fourth one. Okay, right here. Every time you remove and replace that, guys, uh, yeah, it's recommended to put new gaskets. Okay, so if you want to see where we get again ours from, check out the description of the video, guys. It's for your convenience and a really, really affordable price. A little bit of cheating. Okay, perfect. Now we can go ahead, grab this one. One bolt is still holding on this side. And uh, we should be able to pull it up. Let's see if anything else is holding here now. Okay guys, just like that. So we'll cover our holes here uh, because we need to clean all that stuff and we don't want anything to go in the valves and the cylinders. Uh, so uh, make sure you cover them with something really good guys. We'll use the vacuum and later it's important not to forget to remove that because you say goodbye to your engine if you do forget to remove them. So let's go ahead and proceed with the next step now. So uh, you can see guys, that's where the famous leak is. You can see all that underneath. Okay, right there. All that is oil guys. All that is oil. 
inside and it fills up all the way here and it starts leaking on the side so that's quite a bit of another leak there so uh, we'll go ahead and fix that now in some cases uh, you can do you can fix that oil leak by uh, removing and replacing the seals so that's what we will attempt to do other cases you have to replace, replace the whole oil core because it cracks what will happen people will over tighten that cap and as a result it will crack somewhere in the bottom hopefully ours did not crack like that and uh, we can just replace the, the seals so let's go ahead and remove it and see how it's gonna work out now okay so uh, we need to disconnect that wiring harness that red thing here okay you need to lift it up let me show you it goes up okay that's the safety lock there then push in on the clip and pull it out and eventually that thing comes out let us show you where you need to press in okay right there just press in and pull it out okay this is uh, this is one of them now we have one more on the bottom that we need to disconnect as well. So this one, there is a place where you push on the back side. Okay, right there. Push in and then pull the clip out. Now, even though we drain the coolant, most likely there will be st still some coolant and in this uh, hose right here. So when we lift it up, there is four or five holes underneath. That's uh, where the O-rings are. And uh, we'll probably mix the oil and the coolant. So what we'll have to do after that, guys, you have to put fresh coolant, uh, first your system probably, and uh, drain the oil and change the oil and the oil filter as well. So with 8 millimeter reverse torques here we'll be removing a few bolts now Okay, we have one more towards the back. Okay, right there. I can see that we still have one more holding. Okay, and this one is out now. So let's see if we try to pull it up a little bit what's going to happen we'll probably leak oil we'll leak coolant it will be a big mess uh, not so much so far check out guys now all the oil here you can see how much oil the car leaked in the v so definitely definitely quite a bit of an oil leak okay there is one clamp holding that hose down so we just I put the gloves on and I just pulled it straight up came out now we're going to pull it up and we're going to disconnect that coolant hose now with the pliers
Okay, perfect. And you can see this is uh, the old cooler out of there with the old fueler assembly. So we'll get the shop back now and we need to clean all that oil leak. So uh, that only guys usually will develop more uh, during the cold months, cold weather because those, uh, those, those rubber seals they will turn into plastic, kind of like instead of being rubber they will be plastic, really really hard rubber. So uh, you can see like this one, it's not flexible at all. So we will need to remove the one here, we have this one here, two that are still on the block and one right there. And you can see how flat they are, they shouldn't be that way. So the car can actually develop a coolant leak as well, not just an oil leak. Okay, we're going to pull this one out now. Okay, check out the, the thing, it's not almost flexible at all. If I press on it too hard, probably I'll crack it on one side. And I'll get the new ones and show you what they look like now. Let's just pull this one out. And this one here now. You can see how this one's flat. Probably that's where the most of the oil came from from that one here yeah, okay and we need to get the two that are still on the engine block here for the coolant they're a little bit stuck okay perfect So we can found, uh, find uh, where we got ours from, this is the new bag right here uh, by Machle, really really good company, we used them before and uh, we are pretty satisfied, affordable price, okay and good parts, nothing sponsored here guys, everything's purchased by us, all we are trying to do, save you money and show you where we get our parts from. Okay, check out how this one is not flat like the other one. Okay, this one was flat, this one is not. And two more, this is for the coolant. Okay, perfect. So you can see that's how we replace the oil seals, guys. Uh, now, here we clean everything. We still need to do just a little bit on this end, but mostly everything is clean now so it doesn't smell, it, that oil is not there because otherwise it would just stay here. Uh, but everything else from that point on, you just have to put together in reverse order that we took it apart, guys. So hopefully the video will be helpful to some of you. Uh, please hit that subscribe button for more videos and see you guys next time.